Chapter 3. Why can't I learn? By dark, it was plain to Farmer Hoggett that whether he liked it or not, Fly had not four, but five children. All the long summer evening, Babe had followed Fly around the yard and buildings aimlessly, it seemed, to the watching farmer, though of course this was not the case. It was, in fact, a conducted tour. Fly knew that if this foster child was to be allowed his freedom and the constant reassurance of her company, for which he obviously craved, he must quickly learn his way about the place and that he must be taught, as her puppies had been taught, how to behave like a good dog. A pig you may be, babe, she had begun by saying, but if you do as I tell you, I shouldn't be a bit surprised if the boss doesn't let you run about with us instead of shutting you up. He's a kind man, the boss is. I knew that, said Babe. When he first picked me up, I could feel it. I knew he wouldn't hurt me. You wait, began one of the puppies, and then stopped suddenly at his mother's warning growl. Though she said nothing, all four of her children knew immediately, by instinct, what she meant. Wait for what? said Babe. Uh, you wait half a tick and we'll take you round and show you everything, said the first puppy hastily, won't we, Mum? So Babe was shown all around the yard and the farm buildings and introduced to the creatures who lived thereabouts, the ducks and chickens and other poultry and the farm cats. He saw no sheep, for they were all in the fields. Even in the first hour, he learned a number of useful lessons, as the puppies had learned before him, that cats scratch and hens peck, that turning your back on the turkey means getting your bottom bitten, that chicks are not for chasing and eggs are not for eating. You do as I do, said Fly, and you'll be all right. She thought for a moment. There is one thing though, babe, she said, and she looked across at the back door of the farmhouse. If I go in there, you stay outside and wait for me, understand? Aren't pigs allowed in there? asked babe. Not live ones, said one of the puppies, but he said it under his breath. No, dear, said Fly. Well, not, not yet, anyway, she thought. But the way you're going, I shouldn't be surprised at anything. Funny, she thought. I feel really proud of him. He learns so quick. Quick as any sheepdog. That night, the loose box in which Babe had first been put was empty. In the next door one, all six animals slept in the straw together. Though he did not tell his wife, Farmer Hoggett had not had the heart to shut the piglet away. So happy was it in the company of the dogs. At first, the puppies had not been equally happy at the idea. Mum, they said, he'll wet the bed. Nonsense, said Fly. If you want to do anything, dear, you go outside. There's a good boy. I nearly said, there's a good pup, she thought. Whatever next? In fact, in the days that followed, Babe became so dog-like, what with coming when Fly came and sitting when Fly sat and much preferring dog's food to anything else he was offered that Farmer Hoggett caught himself half expecting, when he patted the piglet, that it would wag its tail. He would not have been surprised if it had tried to accompany Fly when he called it to go with him on his morning rounds, but it had stayed in the stables, playing with the puppies. You stop with the boys, babe, Fly had said, while I see to the sheep. I shan't be long. What sheep? the piglet said when she had gone. The puppies rolled about in the straw. Don't you? No, that's you silly babe, said one. Sheeps are animals with thick woolly coats and thick woolly heads. And men can't look after them without the help of the likes of us, said the four. Why do they need you, said babe? Because we're sheep dogs, they all cried together and ran off up the yard. Babe thought about this matter of sheep and sheep dogs a good deal during the first couple of weeks of his life on Hoggett's farm. In, in that time, Fly's puppies, now old enough to leave home, had been advertised for sale, and Fly was anxious to teach them all she could before they went out into the world. Daily, she made them practice on the ducks, while Babe sat beside her and watched with interest. And daily, their skills improved, and the ducks lost weight and patience. Then there came, one after another, four farmers, four tall, long-legged men who smelt of sheep, and each picked his puppy and paid his money, while Fly sat and watched her children leave to start their working life. As always, she felt a pang to see each go, but this time, after the last had left, she was not alone. It's nice, dear, she said to Babe, I've still got you. 
but not for that long, she thought. Poor little chap. In six months or so, he'll be fit to kill. At least he doesn't know it. She looked fondly at him, this foster child that now called her mum. He had picked it up, naturally enough, from the puppies, but it pleased her to hear it, now more than ever. Mum, said they. Yes, dear. They've gone off to work sheep, haven't they? Yes, dear. Because they're sheepdogs, like you. You're useful to the boss, aren't you? Because you're a sheepdog. Yes, dear. Well, Mum. Yes, dear. Why can't I learn to be a sheep pig? Okay. Chapter four. You my polite young chap. After the last of the puppies had left, the ducks heaved a general sigh of relief. They looked forward to a peaceful day and paid no attention when the following morning, Fly and Babe came down to the pond and sat and watched them as they squatted and splattered in its soupy green depths. They knew that the old dog would not bother them and they took no notice of the strange creature at her side. They'll come out and walk up the yard in a minute, said Fly. Then you can have a go at fetching them back if you like. <gasps> yes, please, said Babe excitedly. The collie looked fondly at her foster child. Sheep pig indeed, she thought. The mere sight of him would probably send the flock into the next county. Anyway, he'd never get near, near them on those little short legs. Let him play with the ducks for a day or two and he'd forget all about it. When the ducks did come up out of the water and marched noisily past the piglet, she half expected him to chase after them, as the puppies usually did at first. But he fat, sat very still, his ears cocked, watching her. All right, said Fly. Let's see how you get on. Now then, first thing is, you've got to get behind them, just like I have to with the sheep. If the boss wants me to go round the right side of them, that's the side by the stables there. He says, away to me. If he wants me to go round to the left, that's the side by the Dutch barn, he says, come by. Okay? Yes, mum. Right then. Away to me, babe, said Fly sharply. At first, not surprisingly, Babe's efforts met with little success. There were no problems with getting round the ducks. Even with his curious little seesaw and canter, he was much faster than they. But the business of bringing the whole flock back to Fly was not, he found, at all easy. Either he pressed them too hard and they broke up and fluttered all over the place, or he was too gentle and howled back and they waddled away in twos and threes. Come and have a rest, dear, called Fly after a while. Leave the silly things alone. They're not worth upsetting yourself about. I'm not upset, Mum, said Babe, just puzzled. I mean, I told them what I wanted to do, but they didn't take any notice of me. Why not? Because you weren't born to it, thought Fly. You haven't got the instinct to dominate them, to make them do what you want. It's early days yet, Babe, dear she said. Do you suppose, said Babe, that if I asked them politely, ask them politely, what an idea. Just imagine me doing that with the sheep. Please, will you go through that gateway? Would you kindly walk into that pen? Oh no, dear, you'd never get anywhere that way. You've got to tell them what to do. Doesn't matter whether it's ducks or sheep. They're stupid and dogs are intelligent. That's what you have to remember. But I'm a pig. Pigs are intelligent too, said Fly firmly. Ask them politely, she thought. Whatever next? What happened next, later that morning in fact, was that Babe met his first sheep. Farmer Hoggett and Fly had been out round the flock and when they returned, Fly was driving before her an old lame ewe, which they penned into the loose box where the piglet had already originally been shut. Then they went away up the hill again. Babe made his way into the stables, curious to meet this the first of the animals that he planned one day to work with. But he could not see into the box. He snuffled under the bottom of the door, and from inside there came a cough and the sharp stamp of a foot, and then the sound of a hoarse complaining voice. Wolves, wolves, it said. They do never leave a body alone. Nag, nag all day long. Go here, go there, do this, do that. What do you want now? Can't you give us a bit of peace, wolf? I'm not a wolf, said Babe under the door. Oh, I knows all that, said the sheep sourly. Call yourself a sheepdog. I knows that, but you don't fool none of us. 
You're a wolf like the rest of them. Given half a chance, you look at us and you see lamb chops. Go away, wolf. But I'm not a sheepdog either, said Babe. And he scrambled up the stack of straw bales and looked over the bars. You see, he said. Well, I'll be dipped, said the old sheep, peering up at him. No more you ain't. What are you? Pig, said Babe. Large white. What are you? You, said the sheep. Not me, you. What are you? I'm a you. Mum was right, thought Babe. They certainly are stupid. But if I'm going to learn how to be a sheep pig, I must try to understand them. And this might be a good chance. Perhaps I could make a friend of this one. My name's Babe, he said in a jolly voice. What's yours? Ma, said the sheep. That's a nice name, said Babe. What's the matter with you, Ma? Foot rot, said the sheep, holding up a foreleg. And I've got a nasty cough, she coughed. And I'm not as young as I was. You don't look very old to me, said Babe politely. A look of pleasure came over the sheep's mournful face and she lay down in the straw. Very civil of you to say so, she said. First kind word I've had since I were a little lamb. And she belched loudly and began to chew a mouthful of cud. Though he did not quite know why, Babe said nothing to Fly of his conversation with Ma. Farmer Hoggett had treated the sheep's foot and tipped a drench down its protesting throat. And now, as darkness fell, dog and pig lay side by side, their rest only occasionally disturbed by a rustling from the next door box. Having at last set eyes on a sheep, Babe's dreams were immediately filled with the creatures, all lame or coughing, all like the ducks, scattering wildly before his attempts to round them up. Go here, go there, do this, do that, he squeaked fur furiously at them. But they took not a bit of notice, until at last the dream turned into a nightmare, and they all came hopping and hacking and marring after him with hatred gleaming in their mad yellow eyes. Mum, mum, shouted Babe in terror. Ma, said a voice next door. It's all right, dear, said Fly. It's all right. Was it a nasty dream? Yes, yes. What were you dreaming about? Sheep, mum. I expect it was because of that stupid old thing in there, said Fly. Shut up, she barked. Noisy old fool. And to Babe, she said. Now cuddle up, dear, and go to sleep. There's nothing to be frightened of. She licked his snout until it began to give out a series of regular snores. Sheep pig indeed, she thought. Why, the silly boy's frightened of the things. And she put her nose on her paws and went back to sleep. Babe slept soundly the rest of the night and woke more determined than ever to learn all that he could from their new neighbour. As soon as Fly had gone out on her rounds, he climbed the straw stack. Good morning, Ma, he said. I do hope you're feeling better today. The old ewe looked up. Her eyes, Babe was glad to see, looked neither mad nor hateful. I must say, she said, you're a polite young chap, not like that wolf shouting at me in the middle of the night. Never get no respect from they. Treat you like dirt they do. Bite you as soon as they look at you. Do they really? Oh, ah, nip your hocks if you're a bit slow, and worse, some of them. Worse? Oh, ah, ain't you never out of worrying? I don't worry much. No, no, young'un. I'm talking about sheep worrying. You get some wolves as'll chase sheep and kill them. Oh, said Babe, horrified. I'm sure Fly would never do that. Who's Fly? She's my... She's our dog here, the one that brought you in yesterday. Is that what she's called? No, she ain't a warrior, just rude. All wolves is rude to us sheep, see? Always have been. Bark and run and nip and call us stupid. We ain't all that stupid, we just get confused. If only they'd just show a bit of common politeness. Just treat us a bit decent. Now, if you was to come out into the field, a nice well-mannered young chap like you, and ask me to go somewhere or do something politely like you would, why, I don't, I'd be only too delighted. That's the end of that chapter.